The Able to Care podcast is sponsored by Able Training Support Limited, who build partnerships with organizations to develop confidence and competence in their team to promote positive outcomes for all. Find the link in the description. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Able to Care podcast. And it is me, your host, Andy Baker. And today we are going to be doing another book review. Uh, we got some really good feedback last time and um, I've got another author coming on who has created um, a book. Uh, well, one of the authors of this particular book anyway. Um, and I think it's a great, uh, great book. So I thought I would do a bit of a review on it. So with no further, without further ado, the book that we are talking about on today's episode, for those watching can see the cover, but it is called How to Have Incredible Conversations with Your Child, a book to use together, a place to make conversation, a way to build your relationship. And the authors are Jane Gilmore and Bettina um, uh, Honnan. And it's Jane that I'm going to be having a conversation with soon. So that is the book. I'll show it on the camera there. Make sure you know we'll see it. Okay. So as you see, it's quite a large book. For those of you can see it, kind of an A4 size. Um, and I've had a chat with, with Jane already about this book because I did think it was, it was fantastic. So uh, to tell you a little bit about it, the, the book itself is obviously it's a little bit self-explanatory as far as how to have incredible conversations with your child. Um, and I think Jane's passion towards this is fantastic that, that she recognized that for many parents, caregivers, they can find it really difficult to connect and engage with their children. Um, communication is something that we teach a lot about in ABLE training. And we kind of take for granted that we all do it, it's all easy. But when you are engaging with children, especially like individuals who are neurodiverse, for instance, uh, it may be more difficult to empathize with them. And quite often, obviously, neurodivergent may is, it has some hereditary predispositions for it. And therefore, we might have two individuals in a household who are um, somewhere on the spectrum of something and they find it, therefore find it harder to engage with each other. So this book gives really practical um, and manageable tips and worksheets to kind of work through to have conversations um, with your children. So they talk about, about um, uh, having these opportunities for conversations. And I think the instinct is for a book like this is it, it, it's to use both at calm and uncalm times from, from the information they've passed forwards in it. It's uh, something to practice in the calm times, but it's also something that can be used then when individuals are getting into a heightened state or a struggle. For many out there, and, and I know for myself as well, both from being a child once upon a time, but also for having children, it can feel difficult to know how to connect. So, you know, if you say to a child, how was your day? And they just go fine. And they just seem a little bit non-engaged, dismissive especially in our busy lives, it can feel like, well, that'll have to do for now. It wasn't the ideal. It's not what I wanted. Or maybe it was what I wanted. I didn't want any more than that. You know, it can be difficult to make time for those conversations. And I think this is particularly an important book since situations have occurred, like with, you know, um, uh, the greater level of social, social isolation that occurred during the, you know, the lockdowns. Um, that, that means that many children out there have missed out on some time of social interaction. So there is a slight deficit or a slight um, delay as far as their social emotional development is concerned. And that's what this book is focused on. But really, it is a book about social emotional development for children, but using conversations and using dialogue to help children with that. So giving the parents the tools to be able to overcome the how is your day fine to really actually explore what was going on, but in a way that's not too intrusive, because that's the other thing that you don't want is you don't want to be bludgeoned by conversation and forced to engage in conversation you don't want. And they, they use quite a good analogy in here, which is, you know, it, it could be too silly. It wants to be the kind of the strawberry flavoring that goes with everything else rather than the thing itself. So it's just an addition. It's just a nice little extra that we can start bringing into a bit of practice. They also talk about that it should be led by 
by both parents as well. And I think this is this is massive. I did a podcast recently um, with the um, the I Don't Hate Men podcast where we we're talking about the well-being of children um, around divorce. And I think it often, as a generalization, can come down to one caregiver to do the majority of the conversations and have a majority of the the talks um, around difficult subjects and emotional and because maybe that individual is there more often and therefore it, they feel more accessible or, you know, the opportunities are there more. But this gives opportunities for both parents or both caregivers to potentially have a bit more equality in the way they approach conversations, giving some tools. Because it can be more difficult for one if you're out of practice, you don't do it very often, depending on your job, or maybe there is an element of neurodivergence from one partner rather than the other, that having some tools to kind of use doesn't just help the development of the child. I suppose it also helps the development of the adult. You know, we've never finished growing, have we? So we might as well kind of use strategies like this to improve what we do um, and expand. Yeah, there's some useful kind of uh, principles. As far as the, the layout of the book's concerned, the only sort of downside I would say to some degree um, is that it's a lot. Um, obviously, you can see it's quite a large book and there is a lot of different activities in here. So it can feel a little intimidating when you first pick it up. Um, there's quite a lot of dialogue at the, the start, but then it goes through. But let me go through a few bits that I think are, are quite important. So one, it refers to the kind of the four sides of the compass. And the four sides of the compass it refers to is who are you? How are you? What helps? And what gets in your way? So these are exploring the four elements of the children with the children. So who are you is a, seems like an obvious question, but it's about helping them to recognize their own inner world, their own inner motives, their own sense of identity um, and anything that they find difficult. So it's about describing others, uh, ourselves to others, um, about getting to know ourselves as well. Um, I, I know I, for instance, I find it very difficult to kind of be able to say or used to, I've got a lot better and I've conditioned myself, but struggled to sometimes say what I was good at and what I thought I was good at, because this is ingrained to be modest and don't brag. Um, but that sometimes means that you end up not being able to express what you are good at. And I've worked with a lot of people as far as helping with their CVs, for instance, who are kind of going like, why have you played that down? That's an incredible achievement and you're really good at that. So say you're really good at that. It's okay. But I think some people find it really difficult. And these are the skills that we learn early in life. It's finding that balance, isn't it? That we don't want to brag, but we also don't want to dismiss um, or, or underplay what our actual skills and abilities are. Because if we tell people, I'm all right, they'll think that we're just all right. If we tell people, yeah, I'm pretty good at that, then they're probably likely to believe it. If I go around telling everybody, I'm amazing, although people do tend to believe it, if you look at some of the sort of big stars out there who've done exactly that, but that can lead us up to fall or it doesn't demonstrate a good level of humility or it can be a poor interpersonal skill. So it's, it's a skill to be able to, you know, be able to say what you're good at or who you are and what you do and what you like in a balanced way. How are you? Introduce the concept of feelings. So there's a lot of emotional regulation within this book, which is something that obviously those who don't the court, uh, or the, um, listen to other podcasts with me or do training with me and things like that. When we're looking at one of the biggest challenges or difficulties with, um, with challenge behavior, or behavior that challenges, emotional dysregulation is a part and parcel of that. So the more psychoeducation that we can help children to recognize their emotions, be more self-aware, um, but also to then have management tools to be able to emotionally regulate. These are so important for life. There's so much I wish I'd learned and known about my own emotional awareness and emotional well-being and emotional intelligence um, that I have learned through studying later on. Um, yes, my, my parents did help me along the way. Um, I was very lucky in my childhood, but there was a lot that I didn't understand and they didn't understand. And there weren't always conversations that we had to really explore and understand our emotions and the uses of them and, and how to manage them in in safe and comfortable ways, or to sometimes be able to go, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to sit with this negative emotion rather than dismissing it or redirecting it or deflecting it and, and just 
pretending it isn't there sometimes. That leads us into the what helps as well. So what are our ways of coping? Um, sometimes we're not always aware of how we respond to our emotions and how we act out as a result of those emotions. So again, an opportunity to talk through those. You know, we do a lot, do a lot with the restorative practice where it is about reflecting on our actions and why we did what we did and how we can learn and improve the outcomes from our behaviours based on the feelings that we had or the thoughts we had at that particular time. And then the last bit is what gets in our way. We all have those moments that trip us up or make choices that inhibit development and growth. And so this is, again, helping children to develop mindset related to growth mindset or um, helping them to explore, um, you know, moving away from fixed thinking and fixed ideas. Um, again, many of you who know me will know I go on about growth mindset all the time. Um, I have a, uh, so I, I'm very into my martial arts. I've been a martial artist for a very long time. Uh, but one of my senseis has a little rule. So when a, when a child comes over to him, he's quite a stern and strict man, um, a bit old school. And uh, so a child will come over and go, I can't do this. And then he'll show them how to do it and, and um, help them to do it. And he is very kind and very patient when it comes to that. But then afterwards, when they then demonstrate that they can do it, he makes them do 10 press-ups for lying to him. Um, and I've always kind of thought that's... <laughs> Although I don't 100% agree, I don't know. I, th I really like it in some ways. You know, ethically, I'm like, mm, but there's an element of, yeah, yeah, you did lie because you said you can't. And it is that conditioning out of them that, you know, if you think you can do something, you think you can't do something, you're, you're probably right. Um, so straight away by saying I can't, it's I can't yet, or I'm finding this difficult rather than I can't. And, and there's so much that, um, you know, those core beliefs, those scripts that we have, that come along in our lives that we're not even aware of and they're completely subconscious, but they hold us back. They limit us. They affect our relationships. They affect our achievements. They impact on how we, um, you know, our successes uh, and everything. So this is where I think this, this book comes into play because this is the conversations that I think I look back on as a child and wish my parents had had some tools to be able to talk about their emotions. You know, my parents have always been very loving and they've always been been amazing, but I don't think they were ever given tools of how to overcome the fine. You know, when I came home from school and they said, how's your day been? And I just go, all right, and then kind of marched off. They didn't know how to interact and get more out of me. It was just dismissed of a, okay, it was a barrier. And it's not because they didn't want to, it's because they didn't know how to. So there's some really good little exercises. So the way the book is kind of uh, broken up, um, I say these different compass points, those four main areas that we've just mentioned as far as who are you, how are you, what helps and what gets in your way. And in each of those, then you've got these different exercises. And each exercise is sometimes a bit of an explanation. Um, but if we look at the incredible conversations, for instance, the who are you ones. So who are you my best day? So this is an easy start, usually full, and full of positivity, a way of finding out about people, places and things that I loved and wished for. So it's just about uh, getting curiosity. So um, this is getting them to just answer who they are. The next page is my best day. So now the way it tends to be broken up then, it's an easy start, usually fun and full of positivity. Again, it describes it, but then it gives you some conversation starters. So how a parent can actually instigate this conversation Let's imagine you can do anything you like for a day. Talk me through your day minute by minute. Do you wake up in a treehouse, play with kittens, fly a helicopter, have a foam slide party? You can choose anything. Invite anyone to be with you, be anywhere, do anything for one day. Ready, go. So again, you can obviously adapt this to the age of the individual if we wanted to. But there's things that they also give you to how you can help the child keep talking. So it gives you extra tools to encourage. So what happens the second you open your eight eyes and wake up? Are you in your usual bed? What happens next? You open the door and then, so it, it encourages them to kind of give more and talk about it more. It is a workbook as well. So there is opportunities to actually record things within the book as well to reflect back on. Um, so it gives you a description, it gives you an activity, and then it gives you kind of an area to record uh, the results and, and date of the conversation, where you had it, what do you think went well, um, what can you take from it, what can you learn from it, and anything else that you want to remember. It's got these little notes sections. 
So it's really nice to put together, not just as a kind of an activity to kind of do with your kids, but also to reflect back. And I, I genuinely think, and obviously I'll find out more from the, from the author as well, but obviously these are very, very reusable. Um, and I believe there's a section where you can actually download these as little worksheets as well. So you don't have to write in the book itself. Now, as I said, it can look a little overwhelming as far as a book's concerned. And the fact that it is quite big, thick and, um, you know, a couple of hundred pages of, of activities in there. What I did like, though, is towards the back of the book, you actually have some um, conversation pathways. And the conversation pathways um, are, so if, if you are new to talking, start with these incredible conversations. And it gives you the names of the different activities. So if you're brand new to it, if you feel confident, have a go with these. So it gives you, depending on where you are, as far as your skills, abilities, confidence with having conversations with your children and instigating conversations and talking about certain things, especially emotional stuff that might feel really uncomfortable to some parents and caregivers. It may not be something they're used to. Most of us go through life, you know, an element of suppression and repression that's happened for whatever reasons. So this gives you a bit of a breakdown of which activities within the book to actually try. So that is my recommendation as far as I think it's really good. I think it's an amazing little toolkit. I always love workbooks that parents can do with kids uh, that improves that social emotional skills um, because I think they are so important in life. Um, we are a social species and therefore we want to make sure that we're giving us the best tools, you know, if to be able to um, interact with others, to make friends, to have a positive quality of life. Because things like that, you know, it says not, not what you know, it's who you know. And, um, you know, engaging in workplace and things like that, it is useful tools and skills to have. So um, I will make sure there is a link to the book um, within the show notes or in the, uh, the notes on YouTube. Um, but check it out as far as Jane, Jane Gilmore and Bettina uh, Honnan. I'll show again. So how to have incredible conversations with your child. Um, yeah, a, a guide to having chats. You never realized it was so complicated, did you? You're just doing it. But actually, we can really get into some positive conversations and learning experiences and maybe develop a deeper relationship and deeper understanding with our children as a result of that. Uh, if you found this episode interesting, please like and share, or maybe you want to buy that book for a friend of yours because you think, hey, this could be really useful for them to build better connection with their children. Um, and I think it's something that you could use at all ages. So do check it out. Uh, so we'll put the link in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>